this? Yeah, there's some more. Uh, they'll come later. Um, also, I had mentioned before, I am slowly trying to post um, recordings of like the lectures, so if you want to catch up, um, some of them are up there. Not everything will be. Anyway. Um, so yesterday we talked about adding and subtracting in binary, um, which builds upon what we learned about the number systems and how to convert back and forth from binary. So adding in binary is the exact same as adding in decimal. Um, we just, if you have a binary addition, you just add each individual column up with carries. And um, because you have a system where you only can represent, oops, that's one, sorry, two states, um, when you have a carry, you ought, or when you have one plus one, obviously, you'll end up with a carry because you can't have two. That's impossible. So it's zero with a carry of one. Um, so in this first column, one plus one is zero, carry of one. Um, here we have one plus one, which is zero, with a carry of one plus the carry. So then you end up with one, one. Um, then we have one plus one, zero, with carry of one. One plus one, zero. And then there's a final carry um, of one here. So if you want, you can convert the numbers back and forth to confirm the results are what you'd expect. Um, when we subtract in binary, again, it's very similar to when you subtract in decimal. Um, if you have something like this, 23 minus 17, for the first column, you'll need a borrow. So we borrow from this column. Um, and the borrow has a value of 10, basically. So this becomes 13 minus 7, um, because we're in a decimal system, so 10 to the 1. Uh, so it's sim very similar to how we're going to do it in binary, um, and then we just continue on. But in binary, let's see, say so you have something like that. Um, again, we need a borrow here, because 0 minus 1 uh, will be negative. So we borrow from here, which becomes 0 and we put a borrow there. Um, the value of this, of course, is not 10, because we're in a binary system. It's 2. Um, so if you want, you can think of this 1, 0 uh, as 2, the way it's written. So then you have 2 minus 1 gives you 1. Um, 0 minus 1, again, you will need to borrow uh, from this guy. And it becomes 2 minus 1 is 1, and you just continue on like that. When we're dealing with this, we're going to need uh, po both positive and negative numbers. You can add a negative number to a negative number, negative number to a positive number. Um, and there's a question of how we're going to represent that. So everything up until yesterday we dealt with, um, when you converted a number, we were just converting it directly from binary to decimal. So 0, 1, 1 is equal to 3. And this comes about because you have various uh, values for each place. So this one's worth 1, this one's worth 2, this one's worth 4. Um, so when you add 1 plus 2, you get 3. So when we need to create negative numbers, we need another way, another sort of system, or another way to deal with these. And the easiest way is to just uh, make one digit up here, what we call the sign bit. And if the sign bit's 0, the number is positive. Um, if the sign bit's 1, we just say the number is negative. So when we have this type of system, we can write it out in a number wheel. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and then we get up into here, where the sign bit, this bit here, is 1. So we get negative 0, negative 1, negative 2 negative 3, negative 4, negative 6, negative 7. Um, this type of system, although it might seem sort of intuitive, it has some problems. The first one is we have two zeros, so negative 0 and positive 0. In a direct comparison, aren't the same way. You need to deal with that. Um, and even more importantly, trying to add up stuff gives you the wrong results. Um, so here we have an example of negative 5, plus 1, um, so this 1101 1, 1 is the representation for negative 5. 
and 001 is the representation for positive 1. So if we just add them using binary addition, we get 1110, um, which is negative 6, which is obviously wrong. So if you are making an adder or subtractor 2 using this system, you have to deal with a lot of different cases. You have to deal with cases where one number is negative and positive, both are negative. Um, like this example here, they're both negative, and it still doesn't work with straight binary addition. Um, so this is obviously going to make it a little more complicated when you go to build an adder with this system. Um, so what we'll use is sort of this idea that uh, the sum of a positive and negative is their difference, which will also later let us simplify the idea that if you want to subtract two numbers, you just add uh, the negative. So if you want to subtract 5 minus 3 um, is equal to 5 plus negative 3. The advantage of this that we'll see is that we don't need separate adder circuitry and separate subtractor circuitry. All you ever need is an adder um, and some ability to deal with numbers and make them negative or not. And to do this, we use a complementary number system. And complementary numbers um, are a way of sort of simplifying subtraction. And they were popular when, if you weren't as good at math or you're sort of a merchant way back in the day and you needed to do a lot of subtraction quickly and you couldn't afford errors. Um, so the first one we'll talk about is the diminished radix complement. So we'll start with decimal. Um, so in decimal, which is base 10, uh, the diminished radix complement is 10 minus 1 equal to 9's complement. Um, and so to use the complementary system, we basically take the original uh, problem we want to solve and we adjust some of it. So as an example, say you have 543 um, and you're trying to subtract 273 from it. And if you wanted to do this normally, you would 3 minus 3, that's fine. But then 4 minus 7, you need to borrow from higher digits. Um, so with 9's complement, it avoids the need to borrow. And how we do this is we turn this number, 273, take 9's complement of it, um, and we achieve the 9's complement just by subtracting 9 from each position. Um, so when we do this, what we end up with is the 9's complement of the number, 726. Uh, so then, to do this exact same problem here, the original problem, um, we again, we 543, so that part's the same. And then we instead use the 9's complement that I got here, um, and we just add the two together. And the idea being that addition is a little easier for people than subtraction with borrows. Um, so when you do this, you'll get 9, 6, 12, 12, 69. Um, and the one final step in this process is you have to take any resulting carries here. So there's three digits here, three digits here, but there's this extra carry. Um, and you add it in at the bottom. So you kind of eliminate this. Uh, and that gives you 270, which is the correct result of that. Uh, original subtraction. The radix complement is when we use, if it's base 10, it's decimal. Um, so this would be the tens complement, for example, for decimal. Um, and with this system, it's the same sort of idea. So we start with some addition that we want to simplify by doing um, some subtraction. We want to simplify by using addition instead. Um, and again, we take the tens complement of this number, and we do that by subtracting from 10 to the power of 3, um, as there's three digits, minus, oh, there's no, no hand of um, minus 273. Uh, and when you do this, you obviously will need to use boros uh, for this subtraction. So the disadvantage is it's a tiny bit more complicated initially. And uh, you'll end up with just 999 there. 
And um, then the tens complement is just 727. So you might notice that the radix complement is just one added to the diminished radix complement, which was 726 here at 727. Um, and the result of that is that when we simplify this, we go 543 plus 727. Um, and this gives you, instead of 1269, 1270. We just ignore that extra one. Uh, and you get your final result. So it works. And where we really care about this is you're obviously OK with decimal math. So that's not what you want to use it for anymore. But for binary uh, addition, it is a lot simpler. So in the same way, we can take the twos complement of a number, uh, or the ones complement, uh, and use that. So before, I had said if you want to subtract two numbers, instead take the twos complement and just add them. Um, so to take the twos complement of a binary number, for example, we uh, there's a, two ways to do it. The first way is that, as before, we fight, make the diminished radix complement, which for binary is the ones complement, and you just add one. Um, a ones complement is the same as just inverting every bit. And then you add one. And um, when you go through, you'll end up with the, oops, the twos complement. Uh, so that's the twos complement of that binary number. The second way to do it is um, just you directly write down the original number starting here. Um, so starting at the right-hand side. Uh, and you write it down until you encounter your first one. And you write that as is. And the rest of the bits you invert. So this works out to be the equivalent as the previous system. So what yeah, so or for any binary number, this system. So uh, both of them will result in the same number. So if you ever want to check your work, you can do both of them. Uh, so when we talk about this bit here, the rightmost bit, we do have a name for it. Um, and we'll call it the, the least significant bit, or LSB. Um, so the LSV is the least significant bit because it has the smallest numerical value associated with it. Uh, so here you can see it's worth that placeholder's worth a value of 1. Um, the most significant bit, or MSV, has the highest value associated with it. This is for a 7-bit system, for example. So the MSV is the 7th bit. Uh, if you have an 8th bit, that you were using in your number system, obviously it would then be the eighth bit. Um, so then that's just the same instructions written again. So those were just some examples we were doing. Again, you could do it either way. You can either start here, just directly write 0, 1. So the first one you keep, and the rest of the stuff you just invert. Um, or the first way is just to write the inverted bits. And add 1. Um, and the result will end up being the exact same as this one. So you get 0, carry the 1, 1, and then 0, 1. And you can see how it follows the rest of these. Um, if the first bit's 1, again, using the fast way, you start copying until you reach your first 1, which might be the first bit. You copy it as is, and then you just invert the rest. Um, and if, with the other way, you just invert all the bits and add 1, and you can see where they start to follow each other and then add one, and that'll end up being the same. Um, so 
if we want to use what we call, this is sort of the, the holy grail of um, notations, is the sine two's complement. And this is the notation used in basically most computer systems you run into, most programming language internally are using this. So we're using the top bit is still an indication of if it's positive or negative. Um, so with the bit is zero, again, you can just convert it as if it was a regular binary number. When we get to this point, though, we instead are using the twos complement format. So 1000, zero, 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 um, because this bit is high, equals negative. And we know it's in the twos complement. So if you want to convert 1000 zero, zero, zero from twos complement to decimal, um, you can just, I'll use the invert uh, each bit. And then when you add 1, um, plus 1, and then this will give you 0 carry the 1, 0 carry the 1, 0 carry the 1. So it gives you 1, 0, 0. And ignore the fact it's the same, because when you convert this, you get 8. This is equivalent to binary 8. Um, so it's value 8, except it's negative, because the sign bit's negative. Um, similarly, let's say, convert 1 in the middle here, so that we get or 1001. Zero, zero, one. Um, when we convert this, so again, I'll invert each bit, 0, 1, 1, 0. Add 1. Um, and we get 1, 1, 1. Oops, no extra 1. 1, 1, yeah, which is binary 7, 1, 1, 1. So this is then value negative 7. Um, and it goes on, so forth. So this is the, the signed twos complement format um, that you'll see most of the time. One note about it is that in this example, um, I have a four bit, this is a four bit twos complement. So there's a range of numbers that a four bit twos complement format can hold. In this case, you can see it goes from zero to plus seven, um, and then it goes from minus eight to minus one. So the the negative range is slightly larger because zero is basically taking up one slot of the positive range here. Um, so you have negative, positive, and zero. Um, and you just can't hold a number that's any bigger than that within a four bit two's complement. So actually that one question came up on the assignment. Some of the numbers might not fit that you're asked to convert into the 8-bit format, and the answer is it just can't fit. It's impossible to do. Uh, you can extend it if you want to, you know, 9, 10-bit number, but there is a limit to how big of a number you can hold within, say, a 4-bit 2's complement format, um, because we're saying the top bit is the sign bit, and it can't represent anything else. And then you split the space into those two sides. Um, so, there's some of the other references um, to this section if you want to read more. And I'll take a five minute break now before starting the new stuff. And if you have questions, too, feel free to ask them. This. Pardon? What time? Do we have it up We should. They're still sort of working out on the space.